Lord, we are grateful. Thank you and thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Father, we are grateful this morning. We celebrate you, Jesus. We honor you. We adore your name. To you alone be all the praise and all the glory. Father, accept our thanks and praises in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, the hour has come this morning to hear your word. Send your word to us again like never before. Lord, we pray on this covenant of vengeance. Lord, arise, O God, and let all your enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, hide me behind the cross of Calvary. No man will see me nor hear me. But everyone will see you. Everyone will hear you. Your name will be glorified. And your people shall be blessed. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. And you may please be seated. Help me welcome your neighbor to the left and right this morning. You are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you today to this special anointing service. It's also our covenant days of angel. In the name of Jesus, today, God will arise for you and all your enemies will be scattered. In the mighty name of Jesus. Until the God of vengeance shows up, the wicked may never give up. David speaking in Psalm 94, he said, O oh Lord, God to whom vengeance belongeth, O oh God to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. This morning, the God of vengeance will show himself for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you to these seasons of glory. It's our seasons of glory, and in the name of Jesus, in this service, God will glorify you. That is, he will add glory and color to your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our teaching series has been riding the waves of glory. Riding the waves of glory. And this has been powered all by the Spirit of the Lord. I've been speaking on diverse Spirit of the Lord that can empower us to ride the waves, the waves of glory. Just like David said in Psalm 63, O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longed for thee, in a dry and thirsty land, wherein no water, to see thy power and thy glory. To see thy power and thy glory. Every time power comes, glory is the next. In the name of Jesus, as you are empowered this morning, your glory shall come forth in Jesus' mighty name. So therefore, we've been talking about diverse manifestations of the Holy Spirit. It's one Holy Spirit, but different administrations and diverse manifestations. In order to empower us to fulfill our glory, we must operate in one of the diversities of the Holy Spirit. And we've mentioned about six of them since the month commenced. Mentioned the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we mentioned the spirit of obedience. We mentioned the spirit of meekness. We mentioned the spirit of faith and the spirit of servanthood and the spirit of revelation. This morning, we're going to have three more spirits, three diversities of the Holy Spirit in order to fulfill our glorious destiny. And the first one we we'll be mentioning this morning is the spirit of love. Say with me the spirit of love. I'm sure we've heard a lot about the spirit of love, but we cannot overstress the power of a spirit of love. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7, the Bible says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. For God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise the Lord. So, God has given us the spirit of love. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 that we just read, we understand that God is not giving us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and the spirit of love and of a sound mind. Sound mind, the spirit of love. But the Holy Ghost empowers our love for God. It takes the Holy Spirit for our love to be empowered. Now, in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, 
The Bible says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. It's important for us to know that perfect love is impossible without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus emphasized this, and the disciples took it up from there. Now, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, he said, And we know and believe the love that God has to us, God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Somebody say with me, God is love. And he that dwells in God, dwell, he that dwells in love, dwells in God, and God in him. Now, it's important for us to know that the nature of God is love. And if we want to enjoy the glory of God, we must imbibe that nature of God. Now, Jesus Christ, speaking to the disciples in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as Thyself. On these two, two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. Now, Apostle Paul took it up from there. In Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10, he said, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the love. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. I would like to read this same scripture in a uh, very uh, clear translation, the Living Bible. He said, pay all your debts except the debt of love for others. Never finish paying that. For if you love them, you will be obeying all of God's laws, fulfilling all his requirements. If you love your neighbor as much as you love yourself, you will not want to harm or cheat him or kill him or steal from him. And you won't sin with his wife or want what is, what is his. Or do anything else. The Ten Commandments say it is wrong. Or do anything the Ten Commandments say is wrong. All ten are wrapped up in this one. To love your neighbor as to love yourself. Love does not wrong to any, does no wrong to anyone. That's why it fully satisfies all of God's requirements. It is the only law you need. Shout hallelujah. Now, let me read from the Message Bible. It says, Don't run up debts except for the huge debt of love you owe each other. When you love others, you complete what the law has been after all long. The law code, don't sleep with another person's spouse. Don't take someone's life. Don't take what isn't yours. Don't always be waiting, wanting what you don't have. And any other don't you can you can think of finally adds up to this love other people as well as to do yourself you can't go wrong when you love others when you add up everything in the law code the sum total is love shout hallelujah that's how love is powerful however love cannot be done without the empowerment of the Spirit of God. Remember Peter promised heaven and earth that he will never deny Jesus. But three different encounters, he let Jesus down. But when the same Peter was empowered, <laughs> something happened in the book or in the act of the apostles. 
He began to speak against their fathers. He didn't even limit it to them. He started talking against their fathers and their mothers, how they have crucified the Holy One. That was the love of God. Love will always stand very strong when it is empowered. I know someone wants to operate in love. This morning, your love shall be powered up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know we love God. I know we've been serving God. But just like the scripture we read before, and I want to emphasize it, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 to 21. Anyone who says he loves God, but in fact hates his brother or sister, is a liar. This NIV. He doesn't love his brother or sister whom he has seen, so he can't love God whom he has not seen. Here is the command God has given us. Anyone who loves God must also love his brothers and sisters. Now, look at how Revised Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version put it. He said, those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Praise the Lord. So love is the authentic confirmation of your relationship with God. And your relationship with God determines God's relationship with you. But if you are in bitterness, just like we had, if you don't love the brother and sister you can see, you can't claim to love God. So if you are in bitterness and you are serving, you have no relationship with God. You have no love then you have no reward. Now, if you are, in, you are living in unforgiveness and you are in service, you have no relationship with God. Hence, no reward. Now, if you are in jealousy or competitive spirit and you are in service, you have no relationship with God. Hence, no reward. All these are anti-love demonstrations. Love is the authentic confirmation of your relationship with God. And your relationship with God, the time is his relationship with you, ends your reward. Remember, love guarantees rewards. The things we do, mo we do most must be done in love to guarantee rewards. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, the Bible says, Now faith... Hope and love abide. This three and the greatest is love. Now, what is love in practical terms? If we are talking about this love being empowered by God and it is the love of God, but expressed to mankind, what is love in practical time, terms? I'm going to take five in this service and five in the second service as time permits. Number one, love is the release of good wills to others. Love is the release of goodwill to others. That is, the goodness of your heart towards others. That is, a compassionate disposition towards others. Your wish is, let it be well with others. You are not having a different notion to the good of others. People who are not in love wish others pain and hurt. That is, when you see someone make an error, you say it is good for him. Oh, that serves him right. That is not operating in love. Many people are mobile bitterness. They are just moving with bitterness everywhere they go. Bitterness in motion. You see somebody looks good, you are hungry. You see somebody doing well, you are just hot. That is not love. Some are happy if you are always asking them for help. Just to, for you to be under perpetually. That is not love. Love is the release of goodwill to others. That is, someone is getting married, you, are, you wish them well. Someone has a baby, you wish them well. Someone is successful, you wish them well. 
That is love. What is love? Number two, love means treating others as you will want to be treated. Love is treating others the way you will want to be treated. That is, placing yourself in the shoes of others. For instance, as husband, if you were the wife, how would you want your husband to treat you? Would you want your husband to physically abuse you that way? Would you have wanted your husband to emotionally abuse you? Love is placing yourself in the shoes of others. And it's the other way around. If you were, as a wife, if you, if you were the husband, would you also want to be treated the way you are treating your husband? With disrespect, you know, with not having a good relationship with your husband? Love is placing yourself in the shoes of others. Putting yourself in the shoes of others. If it pains you, then you must be sure that it's paining the other. Now, if it hurts you, then you must be sure that it's hurting somebody. Now, if you won't like to be treated that way, then you won't treat others that way. That is love. What we put you to shame, we definitely put someone else to shame. Love means treating others as you will want to be treated. What is love? Number three. Love is contributing to the joy, welfare, and well-being of others. Love is contributing to the joy, welfare, and well-being of others. That is, contributing to the values and comforts of others. Your life is enhancing the values in other people and not devaluing them. That is, people are comforted with you, not tormented by your actions. Some people are tormentor-in-chief. Anywhere they get to, whether in the house, torment at work, torment in the church, torment. That is not love. Love is contributing to the joy, welfare, and well-being of others. When you are loving... You are a pleasant personality, a pleasure to be around. People will want to be around you. If when you come, everybody takes cover, then watch your life. That may not be the demonstration of God's love. When you are in love, you are not a source of pressure, pressurizing people, but a source of pleasure. You are a pleasure to be around. Will you make someone happy today? Will you make someone joyful and excited? That's what love is all about. Now, what is love? Love is defending and protecting the interests and concerns of others. Love, in practical terms, is defending and protecting the interests and concerns of others. Love means defending the reputation and identity of others. Whether they are in your presence or out of sight. That is, the reputation and identity of others are saved in your custody. It means you are not behind people to tear them down, run them down, badmouth them, and try to crush them and finish them. Even if you know the man was like that, even if you know the woman was like that, the sister was like that, it is not in you to hide to it. It is not in you to help the individual to destroy his or her destiny. Love is defending and protecting the interests and concerns of others. There are some people no one is ever good in their sight. Oh, they, somebody talks about this or this or no, don't mind that brother. How about this sister? Ah, no, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's something else. How about that pastor? Oh, no, forget it. How about this one? Nobody is ever good in their sight. That is not love. Love is defending and protecting the interests and concerns of others. There are some, any discussion you have with them is as good as getting on CNN. 
Don't destroy people behind. And you celebrate them when you see them. After you have torn someone down behind, and when you see the person, oh, I just talk about you now. Oh, you, you know, anytime you just call me, everything just change. Wow, you are so good. Meanwhile, it's contrary you said about that person. Napoleon Bonaparte said, he who knows how to flatter us also knows how to slander. Don't sit where people are being slandered. Somebody brought something to you from someone today, be sure he will take something from you to another person. It's your friend today because things are going good. Everything you talk bad about somebody, it will be revealed very soon. That's why David said in Psalm 1 verse 1, he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Now, number five, finally for this service on love. Love means bringing out the best in others. Bringing out the best in others. Increasing the worth of others. Love is making positive difference in others. That is, you are a value enhancer, not a value de-enhancer. That is, you are enhancing the value of others. There are some individuals who meet them, you will never want to meet them again. Because they will pull you down, they will tear you off. But there are individuals you meet, you will always pray to always be with them. Be the reason why others get better. Now, all these things look very, very simple. But that is the real love of God. That is the true love of God. If you claim to love God, it will show in your attitude to others. In the name of Jesus, as this anointing comes upon you today, you are, you'll be baptized afresh with the true love of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the second service... We are going to be talking about, you know, love means celebrating the success and result of others. Love is respecting the dignity and self-worth of others. Uh, we are also going to mention love is living beyond self, not living in a world occupied by self. We're going to talk about love is taking the feelings and emotion of others into consideration in all our actions. Some people, they talk anyhow, they don't feel how the other person they don't think how he feels. That is not love. And we're also going to mention um, about um, love is giving ourselves to make life better for others. Now, that's the spirit of love. Let's quickly take a look at another spirit that is very vital in this service. And that is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now, actually, what the fear of the Lord was in the Old Testament is what love is in the New Testament. So it's almost the same with little thin line of difference. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, it said, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and mind, the Spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. Now, what is the fear of the Lord? Let's take a cue from David, Psalm 112, Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Where the rich shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure forever. Note that verse 1, the conclusive part. Delighted greatly in his commandment. So the fear of the Lord is to have a great delight in doing what God says. That's the fear of the Lord. Lovingly doing what God says. It is the lifesome obedience to what pleases God. Not just obeying God, but the lifesomely, excitedly obeying God. That's the fear of the Lord. Now, what is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is the heart for God. To have a heart for God. When you love him, you keep his commandment. John 14, 15. And Proverbs 23, 26 says, My son, give me your heart and let my eyes observe my ways. Good news translation, I'll put it this way. Pay close attention, son, and let my life be your example. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, the Bible says, But now thy kingdom shall not continue. Talking to Saul, the Lord has sought him a man after his own heart 
and the Lord have commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord had commanded thee. This is basically talking about the love of God. In 1 Corinthians 2.9, the Bible says, It is written, I has not seen, here has not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Look at Joseph. In Genesis 42.18, And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. Everyone that truly fears God, fear well in life. When you operate in the fear of God, you must fear well in life. Now, what is the fear of God? It is living a godly life. Living a godly life. You are living as if God is there with you. The reason why people commit atrocity, iniquity, and all manner of sin is because they lack the fear of God. If it is in the open, will you do it? Will you want to do something you will not want to hear on CNN? And it, that's the question you will ask yourself. This thing I want to do, will I be proud for it to be shown on CNN? Now, if in your room you are now drinking in a king, you have a special fridge in your room, now, will you be proud to be on CNN and be drinking the same thing after you have preached to others that they should not drink it? Now, that's even very light. Somebody say, Bob, Pastor, that one is a small one. Everybody is doing that. You are the only one that is still doing it. <laughs> Nobody is drinking beer again. As a child of God, you are the only one that is still doing it. Okay, let's talk about the, a one. Now, you are sleeping with a boat tray. In, you, know, you go to, you, you, you leave your family on a job uh, assignment. I now went to an hotel. Are you now sleeping with another woman? Will you be proud if that news is revealed on CNN? That's where the fear of God comes into play. Now, you take what, belongs, what does not belong to you. Will you be proud for that to be announced in the open? That's the fear of God. You always remember that God is there. That's how I live my life. Anything I want to do, I have the consciousness that God is there. There is nothing secret to God. There is nothing. Everything secret is open to God. That's why in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 19 to 21, the Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Our emblem when we're going, growing up as a brother is the fear of God. Some of our colleagues in school, they know us and you know that, oh, no, this is a brother. When they call you a brother in those days, all they mean is this is a child of God. He will not sin. It's a brother. So even if they see you in certain things, doing certain things, they are brother. I remember one time I was going with a sister to fellowship, and the, the route to a pass is just behind our hostel, and, you know, balcony of the hostel, or what do they call it here? Is it balcony? Yeah, another name in America for balcony is what? Terrace? Okay, so Sudan will be there, and this day, I uh, just invited this sister to the fellowship, so I went uh, to, you know, to accompany her, we're going together, and right at the balcony of the room, uh, some of the friends, well, they, they saw me, said, hey, bros, <laughs> bros, bros, all they are saying is, brother, you taught us not to, but which one are you doing now? <laughs> Even if it was open, praise the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is living a godly life. Somebody said, oh, they lied against me. Another person said, I will not even position myself to be lied against. You understand that? Don't even position yourself to be lied. Even if they want to lie against you, you are not close to where they can lie against you. Where they can lie against you. Praise the Lord. In 1 Timothy 4, 8, the Bible says, Bodily exercise profited little, but godliness profited unto all things. Someone is being baptized with the spirit of the fear of the Lord this morning. Amen. We saw the fear of the Lord in the man called Job. Job was a man with the, a man with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We saw that encounter in Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, and Job chapter 1, verse 8. And we saw how God 
restore everything the devil to. A man with the fear of the Lord may suffer temporary challenge because everybody may not like you. They ask you to, you know, change figures so that everybody can share. You say no. When they change it, they may not give you part of it. But God will eventually bless you. Shout hallelujah. So don't use the little gain today to, don't trade your future for the little gain today. Shout hallelujah. We saw it in Jesus Christ, in Romans 1, 4, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Now, let's go ahead because of time this morning to the next spirit that God is giving to us, and that's the spirit of wisdom and understanding. This is very crucial. For one to be successful in business, in career, in family, in health, you need this spirit. The reason why many homes are broken today is the lack of a spirit of wisdom and understanding. The reason why many businesses are not making waves is the lack of the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The reason why some ministries are done is because of the lack of the spirit. The, sp the reason why some, health, so, so, some people's health is crashed is because of the spirit of lack of wisdom and understanding. But this morning, someone will be baptized with the spirit. In Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9, Joshua the son of Nun was full of a spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hand upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, this spirit is one of the spirits that was mentioned in Isaiah 11, 1 or 2. We are putting the two together as a combo, spirit of wisdom and understanding. He said, and there shall come for the rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his, his root. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Now, the wise man said in Proverbs 4, 7, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And we thought that getting, get what? Get understanding. You can't do without the spirit of wisdom and understanding. That was the spirit that distinguished Jesus Christ when he was on earth. We can read the story in Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. Where are this man, this wisdom and mighty works? You want to do mighty works? You need the baptism of the spirit of wisdom. It's not by power. Not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Everything seen in this ministry today is by the spirit of wisdom and understanding. It wasn't ordinary wisdom that Jesus was using. It was divine wisdom. Shout hallelujah. And what is the essence of the spirit? The spirit of wisdom and understanding will empower us to correctly apply the knowledge of the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, the way, the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me, John 14, 6. So we have the spirit of wisdom. The truth you know will be correctly applied. Shout hallelujah. And number two, the spirit of wisdom will empower us for supernatural insight. Supernatural insight. We always know what to do. And you will always be able to do them correctly. And what about the spirit again? Divine wisdom is knowing where to go and by the Spirit going there. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 says, The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knew not how to go to the city. Many are confused today. Many are taking wrong steps today. One great man of God said, I took a wrong step in a particular year and my life and ministry went down. One wrong step can ruin entire destiny. That's why you need the spirit of wisdom and understanding. To know what decision to make per time, to know what to go per time. Do you know it's not everyone in church you can marry? It's not everybody in church. So you need a spirit of wisdom and understanding to know the right person. Because you can, if you marry the wrong person, you, you, you marry for life. It's like a car without no brake. Once you enter into it, you jump down on 120 miles an hour, you know the consequence. Shout hallelujah. But this morning, somebody is receiving the baptism of the spirit of wisdom and understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. What is in wisdom? What is in this spirit? Number one, it makes the face of a man to shine. Daniel 12, 3. And that is why you see glory. You see the glory of a man. You see his face begin to shine. When a man begins to operate in wisdom, it begins to shine. Then this wisdom also guarantees promotion. 
Proverbs 4, 7 to 8. Some people are stagnated at work because of lack of wisdom. Wisdom is, divine wisdom especially, is knowing what to do and doing it. And when you know what to do, to get what you want, you get it. Shout hallelujah. Proverbs 4, 7 to 8. And this wisdom, number three, establishes one's destiny. Isaiah 33, 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord, is his treasure. What is in this wisdom? It is an eternal cure for depression. In Proverbs 3, 13 to 14, it says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. You can't be happy and be depressed. The reason for depression is because you are not happy. The reason for depression is that joy is missing. But when you operate in this wisdom, you receive the joy of the Lord. Shout hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in this anointing service, as the oil comes upon you, there will be fresh baptism of the spirit of wisdom and understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to Covenant Day of Vengeance. I'm sure somebody's excited about that. Someone once told me that somebody stopped coming to church again because the day he came was the Covenant Day of Vengeance. And the person was upset that in your church you were killing people. I mean... I think God says we should love. So, but why are you now asking people to die? Well, vengeance is of God. We are not killing people, but God is the one doing the vengeance. God has two sides. He's the God of love. He's also the God of judgment. Praise the Lord. He wants everyone to repent. But if someone will not repent and we want to continue to do wickedly, then you have left no option for God to incur wrath and judgment. Shout hallelujah. Now, starting on that very light mode, that is what we are doing this morning, invoking God's judgment on the wicked. And this is very, very scriptural. Shout hallelujah. Vengeance is scriptural. Vengeance simply means infliction of punishment in return for a wrong committed. Infliction of punishment. Now, when we talk about vengeance, we are not talking about you fighting. We just talk about love now, right? So vengeance we are talking about is not you wishing somebody bad or because you don't love the person. We are talking about vengeance against the oppression of the devil and his agents. So when we are talking about vengeance, we are not talking about individuals. We are talking about demons or those who have submitted themselves for the use of demons and witchcraftry and are oppressing the destiny of people. Shout hallelujah. Let me bring it to the way you're going to understand. If an armed robber comes to your house with gun and he says, now look up and look down. This is your, la your last breath. I've been sent to kill you, and I'm going to kill you now. Now, what will you do at that point? If you have power to take the gun and kill him, what will you do? Uh, you, will, you, will, you, you, will, you will be you will pray for him, oh Lord, bless this man, let him give his life to Jesus Christ. Please don't let him die. Because he has meant to take your life. That's what God is saying. That whoever that will not let you go must go for you. Whoever that will not let you enjoy the blessings of God, God will clear them off from you. That is if they will not repent. There are some people that have just signed up, no matter what, they don't want to change, they don't want to repent. What are they living for? If they will continue to do wickedly. For instance, people just deliberately kill other people. That's not right to God. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35, the Bible says, To me belonged vengeance and recompense. Their food shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Somebody say, Make haste. For instance, you've been praying, Lord, let this person repent, let this person repent. I will not repent. 
and is the one behind you not making progress. What do you think will happen to that person? Judgment. Judgment. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11, hear what the Bible says. It said, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. That's the reason. Because vengeance is not executed, those who are doing evil will continue to do evil. God is the God of love and justice. But he, here is the key. If you are the one that is doing evil, you need to repent. You need to repent. For the fact that you are in church doesn't cover you. You are in church, you come to church, you wear good clothes, in the night, you change to black again, you are flying in the air. Today will be the last time you will fly in the air. I don't mean aircraft, I mean witchcraft. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you are here this morning, you need to repent. Otherwise, the judgment will also answer for you. If you are the one that you will not allow another person's uh, children to get married, you are the ones sitting down on their destiny. You need to repent. Otherwise, this is a dangerous place for you. Praise the Lord. Vengeance. Vengeance. In Psalm 94 verse 4, it says, How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. You know hard things? Statements that are so dangerous to hear. Statement like somebody once said, have you ever seen a snail back baby? And saying as long as I live, you will not back your baby. That's hard statement. Such individuals are not, you know, they are not worthy to exist. Because they don't wish you well. And in the name of Jesus, anyone tying down your destiny this morning, judgment will answer. Some of you, you've been in America for 10, 20 years. You've not made any progress because somebody has padlocked your life. And he's, he, just, he padlocked it. He, he, you know how they do a padlock? And you remove the key and he threw it inside the sea. And until that padlock is opened, your life cannot make progress. But I've got good news for you. <laughs> i got good news for you. The Bible says that on that day, Shall the yoke be taken away from off thy shoulder and the body from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I stand there to decree every evil padlock that they have placed upon you to lock up your destiny is hereby broken off. In the name of Jesus. In Psalm 31 verse 18 he said let the lion lives be put to silence. We speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. In the name of Jesus, everyone speaking contemptuously against you must be silenced this morning. In Psalm 94, verse 21 to 23, it said, They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity, and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. Say, do it quickly, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Remember, vengeance is of God. Vengeance is of God. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8 to 9, the Bible says, He that diggeth a pit shall do what? Shall fall into it. And whoso breaketh an edge, a serpent shall bite. Whoso removeth stones shall be hurt themselves. And he that cleaver wood shall be endangered thereby. That was the predicament of the man called Haman. He raised a gallow, and against the favored 
daughter of Zion, or children of God, but the gallow he raised, he was the one that was hung on it. I decree in the name of Jesus this morning, every evil gallow that was raised for you, whoever raised it will be hung on it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. David said in Psalm 7 verse 16, he said, His mischief shall return upon his own head. And his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pet. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. We must understand that until the God of vengeance shows up, the wicked may never give up. That's why we always have a day like this. It's not all the time we put up this kind of service. It's not all the time. You don't see, you don't see a warrior fight every time. No, a warrior is not a, is not a motor, motor boy. He's not a garage boy. Praise the Lord. We don't see a lot of that in this place. But in some places in Africa, if you live in some places, you see some people at the motor park. They, they are not going nowhere, and they, their business is just to cause problems there. So if you don't understand who they are, you may miss your balls or just you know, lose your destiny because of them. But when you see a warrior, a warrior doesn't fight everywhere. A, 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 a warrior fights strategically. And that is what we are doing this morning. Because we have the victory on our side. And in the name of Jesus Christ, everyone that is against your glorious destiny, God's vengeance will answer for them this morning. Remember, until vengeance showed up, Pharaoh did not let the Israelites go. In the name of Jesus this morning, vengeance is showing up for you. It is righteous for God to do vengeance. Look at the word of Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Verse 6 to 12. He said, Sin, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So don't say, Well, I don't like that church because of this kind of teaching. I don't want to hear this. It is righteous. So, which means if you don't like what I'm saying, perhaps you are a sinner. If it is a righteous thing for God to do it, why would you say otherwise? Is that not the scripture? I don't know whether you are seeing this today. I've not repaired this TV. This is two weeks now. I pray somebody, God will send help to us. All we need is just to make this TV work. So if you are, in the, if you are in church and you know how to run cable, I think studio doesn't have capacity to make it work. It's been two weeks. But you can see it at the back, right? First Thessalon Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God, to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It is a righteous thing. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, anyone who troubles you, God will recompense tribulation to them. You know why? He said, touch not! My anointed. I love that psalm. I didn't memorize it, but it just registered. I think it's Psalm 105, verse 13 to 15. He said, as they went from one nation to another nation, from one kingdom to another people. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yet, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. When this oil comes upon you today, you become a touch not. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That is, God is going to be fighting your battle for you. He's going to be pushing down your enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are so many areas of vengeance. For instance, we have verdicts of vengeance against bondage. If you are in bondage this morning, spiritual bondage, financial bondage, physical bondage, health bondage, emotional bondage, there's going to be a vengeance against that bondage this morning. In Osea chapter 12 verse 13, And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by prophet was a preserved. So prophets are agents of vengeance against bondage. And I stand this morning as the son of the prophet to decree every bondage against your glorious destiny is hereby broken off. In the name of Jesus. There's also a verdict of vengeance against mockery. They have been mocking your destiny. They have thought you will not amount, amount to anything. At work, in family, in community, you have become a, a subject of mockery. 
In the name of Jesus, I decree vengeance against such this morning. Look at Matthew 21, 19 to 20 about the fig tree. I believe that fig tree was mocking Jesus. Jesus was communicating because the tree can hear, it can sense. I need to eat something. And the tree was like, no, you're not going to eat anything. I'm going to disgrace you today. You're going to get hungry. Say, really? Okay. Nobody eats out of you again. In the name of Jesus, anything mocking your glorious destiny is cursed today. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is also a verdict of vengeance against harassment. What is it that is harassing your destiny? What is that thing that is bringing embarrassment to you? Look at prophet Elisha. When he was coming back, those men came, those little boys. They said, bald men, climb the mountain. And what happened to them? Judgment answered. I decree in the name of Jesus. Judgment against everything harassing you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's also a verdict of vengeance against resistance. Certain individuals have been resisted in getting to the places God wants you to get to. In the name of Jesus, vengeance will answer for you. Amen. Elima the sorcerer was resisting Apostle Paul not to talk to, the, to, 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 to that particular officer. I decree in the name of Jesus this morning, the same way it was caused, everything Resisting your glorious destiny, impeding your glorious destiny, is being judged this morning. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. There's also a verdict of vengeance against threats. Threat is an expression of intention to inflict with, play, with pain, injury, evil, or punishment. But in the name of Jesus this morning, every threat against your glorious destiny is being judged this morning. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And there is verdict of vengeance against reproach. What is that thing that is bringing reproach? That is bringing shame? That is bringing disgrace? In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree God's vengeance will answer this morning. So the oil we are about to apply this morning is the oil of vengeance. As this oil comes upon you today in the name of Jesus Christ, the vengeance will answer in the camp of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From today, it will be like David. I love this, the, 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 what they be put in Psalm 89, verse 20 to 24. In the name of Jesus, from this service, your story will be the story of David. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 89 and verse 20 to 24. He said, I have found my servant David, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. What will happen to him? He said, and the enemy with whom my hand shall be established, and my hand also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exert upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before him, and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his own be exalted. When this oil comes upon you today, God will be beating down your foes. God will plague anyone that hates you. That is why it is dangerous to toil with the anointed servant of God. And as your head, as the anointing comes upon you this morning, you become anointed servant of God. So it is dangerous for anyone to toil with you. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, by this anointing this morning, you become untouchable. You become unmolestable, unharassable, undefeatable, ever winning, ever victorious ever breaking through, ever successful. In the name of Jesus, rise with me to your feet this morning. Lift up your voice and begin to pray in advance. Jesus, as this oil comes upon me today, vengeance in the camp of the enemy, whatever that will not let me go, must go for me. Every pit done for me, the enemy themselves will fall into it. Anyone that raises a gallow for me will be hung on the same gallow. Someone is praying this morning. Someone is praying this morning. Someone is praying this morning. Vengeance, 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 vengeance. Le kapo su pakato bagada shakayaga. Limpreketo suzi pakataria. Rembo shakatari. Elis kakota. Remba kotazia. Brendo suzi katoria. Rekaga bakotazi. Embreketo zizia. Rekendo suzi pakota. Erekebo shakatali agabo zimpakata vengeance 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 
Oh God, have vengeance. Arise and let all your enemies be scattered. Vengeance, 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 vengeance. Le kagaba sikatori angebo shakata. Rikago bazuke toria. Rimpe ketosia. Tear down the spirit of darkness. Tear down the power of darkness. Tear down every trade and opposition. Every reproach. Rebabo zukatayaga. Embre ketosi. Ampo katalagaba shakataria. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Yes, back some individuals gathered themselves and they were planning against God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko, and he didn't have a clue of what they were doing. They were planning to, to hunt the man, to get him down. Right there, God brought judgment against them. The first one, I think the first son died. The second one went to jail. The third one, mysterious things just happened to them. Quickly, the man came and apologized that, please, this is what we are doing against you. The man did not know anything, anything, anything about it. So, when you are anointed, this is what happens for you. That's why the anointing this morning is a unique anointing. As this oil comes upon you, God will be fighting your battle. God will be pushing down your enemies. God will be lighting the kingdom for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. However, when you are not born of God, you cannot receive the anointing. In fact, it is very dangerous for you to be in this kind of meeting and pray against the wicked when you are not saved. It's very dangerous. That's why you must be in Christ in order to fight against the wicked forces. If you don't have another power, you don't, you don't make boasts. Because you know they can get at you. But this morning, if you can only receive Jesus, that's all you need. There is no devil born anywhere that can attack you when you are the greater one in you. So every head bow, before we do the anointing real quick, every eye closed. You are here, you know you are not born again, or you are not sure. You are not sure of your salvation. Or maybe you are not sure whether you are still very solid in Christ. Because power is in level, you are not really sure. And you want a new beginning, a new start. Lift up your hand, I will pray for you. You want a new beginning, so as to be empowered, so that you can take what belongs to you, so that you can take authority over all the forces of darkness. All you need to do is to receive Jesus or rededicate your life to Jesus. Anyone in this meeting this morning, you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, lift up your hand. If your hand is up, please come to the altar. I want to pray for you real quick. Jesus will come into your life, then you'll be empowered to take what belongs to you. You'll be empowered to enjoy the vengeance that God has for you. Anyone doing that, please do, do quickly, quickly. Do quickly, quickly this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's not how long you've been in church. You can be in church, but not be in touch with God. It's not how long you've been here. You might have been here for several, several years, but if you know that something is missing in you, why not come and meet your Savior this morning? Any other person coming this morning before we do the anointing? You want to surrender your life to Jesus? Or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ? Praise the Lord. Please come quickly this morning. Lift up your right hand and say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know I have sinned. And come short of your glory. Forgive me my sins. Come into my life and be my Savior and my Lord. I give my life to you. I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your daughter and several others saying this prayer this morning. I pray in the name of Jesus that the same spirit of holiness that it was recommended on Jesus Christ, that sanctified him, sanctify you this morning by the blood in the name of Jesus. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, as you have received Jesus today, you will follow him and serve him all the days of your life. The same grace that brought you will also keep you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.